Well, what, what I would do is I would just go along. This is a general principle and say, look, we want you to have health insurance. You've got to get it. And by the way, if you don't get it, we're not covering whatever sneaks up on you. You see what I mean? In other words, this rule. Okay, full-time employee, 30 days, must be actively at work. Must be actively at work when the insurance starts. And this is the stuff, what Tashara was talking about, the adverse selection. Somebody who takes a job just to get the benefit because they're sick. Right? They're ill. And, you know, are they going to make it through this 30 day waiting period? Okay? What they don't want is they don't want somebody to take a job, get signed up for the benefits, and then a week later they're home and they never show up again. Okay? That's what they don't want. That's adverse selection. That's somebody who joined your company, joined the plan just to get the benefit. Okay? That's not going to give you a normal distribution that you need, okay? So you must be actively at work at the time the insurance is in. So um, the first plan we are gonna talk about is the one we've already started talking about, and that's group life, okay? That's usually a multiple of salary. Um, one to three times salary. three times salary. In other words, the benefit of some companies is one, some companies is two, it can even be three times salary. Coverage usually ends at retirement. And quite often, this policy is paid for it completely by the employer. Okay? Okay, now premiums paid by the employer are not taxed generally to the employees. I told you that was one of the benefits. But when it comes to group life insurance, right, the premium for the benefit above $50,000 is taxable to the employee as income. So suppose I'm working for this company and the benefit is two times salary, right? And I'm making $50,000. $50,000 is my salary and the benefit is two times. So the benefit's gonna be $100,000. That means that the coverage they're buying on me is $100,000, okay? So here's what the IRS does. The IRS says, okay, how much premium is this $100,000 for Tom Callahan costing? And say the company says, well, it's 1,000 bucks a year. Right, and let's say it's evenly distributed. The IRS says, okay, there's no tax on the first 500, but the second 500, we want you to tax to Tom Callahan as if he had received it as income, okay? Which means I'll pay about $100 tax on this 500. This causes havoc in companies, because it's usually HR does it in the last payroll of the year. Has anybody gone through this? Usually it's the last payroll of the year. Right? HR says, surprise, we know, we know you didn't receive the $500, but we got to take 100 in tax. And this is the reason which they find impossible to explain. And they just say, take our word for it, the IRS says we got to tax you on part of your life insurance benefit. That's how it works. And people are like, what? So this is the reason. First 50,000, the premium is free. Above that, the employee gets taxed on the premium for the amount above 50,000, okay? Anybody got 
anybody have any questions on that? Well, the benefit, yeah, the benefit, once the benefit is above 50,000, the premium attributed to the benefit above 50,000 is taxable to the observer. That's right. If you were making twenty-five thousand dollars, okay, um, then there's no insurance above fifty thousand. Are you taxed once you? Um, is your family taxed if you die and you get the hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars? You know, I don't know the answer. I, I don't know. My it seems like there would be double tax, right? My, my mom said that. She has like life insurance that she put in my name and she was like telling me all this information. And I tried to absorb it, but she said that I have to pay tax on the stuff, the money that I get if she dies. Well, she could honestly be wrong. Yeah, no, a life insurance, a life insurance benefit, if it's paid in a lump sum and you're the beneficiary, that's not taxable. Okay, it's not taxable. Okay, so, um, so that's that. But, if it's a whole life policy and you take the cash value before somebody dies, you just say, I'm gonna cash this in, I'm gonna take the cash value, then you're gonna get taxed on that, because that's like taking, you know. Yeah, you can do it, you can cash in. No, they have specific policies for that, yeah. It's like a retirement slash life insurance. And you pay a lot of life for yeah. Okay. Now, let's talk about tax on disability insurance. I, I know we're coming to the end here. Um, what did you do? Disability insurance can also be provided on a group basis. By the way, I'm a big fan of disability insurance, especially for your age group. You're much more likely to be disabled than to die. <laughs> about that for an uplifting way to <laughs> so um, so group disability is, is this under group life or under something well it's it's not under group life no this is a separate policy yeah group life is covering the peril of death group disability is covering the peril of you're not able to work right you're disabled because of something that has happened to you it doesn't have to be work related it can be an auto accident be a skiing accident, it could be something like that. Group disability, right? Group disability insurance can be paid for by the individual, right? You can buy this yourself through what's the one? AFLAC. You can buy group, you can buy disability insurance through them. Uh, if you pay the premium, if the individual pays the premium. then the benefit is not taxable. Because you're not getting a tax deduction when you pay that premium, okay? If the company, that is if your employer pays the premium for group disability insurance, if the employer pays premium, then the benefit is taxable. Then the benefit is taxable. Okay? So, in summary tonight, the group insurance is less expensive than individual insurance. That's a big benefit. It's often tied to employment. That can be good or bad because uh, you can lose your job. And, you know, it has its positives and negatives, it has its features. One of the ways to continue group benefits if you lose your job is through COBRA. The COBRA Act was passed just for this reason. If you're signed up for group health insurance, medical, vision, dental, all this stuff. You can continue your benefits. You can continue the benefits for 18 months. For 
up to 18 months by paying the monthly COBRA premium, which is expensive because it's unsubsidized. It's the real premium, right? That's, that's the problem. Like, like I was telling you before, if the real premium is $5,000 a month and your insurer, your employer is paying 70% of that, then they're paying $3,500 a month, you're paying $1,500 a month. When you lose your job, you get the option to continue this health insurance, but you gotta pay the whole five grand. So it's murderous. I got bad news for you, you're losing your job. I got worse news. You're gonna be able to continue your health insurance for five grand a month. It's terrible, right? It's a terrible hit. But that's what the COBRA Act does. It enables you to continue that benefit if you really need to, okay? More questions? All right, let's see you next week. Okay. Is there homework this week? Yeah, the homework will post tonight and it'll be next week. It'll be your last homework.